Welcome to lesson 6 of the Arabic course. In this lesson we will look at exercise 4 and exercise 4 is about simple sentences. The thing is that in Arabic simple sentences do not include any verbs. I, the verb to be, in other words, in Arabic is not used in the simplest sentences. So you can have two words like um, a river is big and in English you have you have uh, uh, several words a river is big but in Arabic it's enough with two words Nahrun kabirun. Nahrun, a river. Kabirun, big. River, big. Or a river, big. No is. No is is necessary. So, Nahrun kabirun is the first example of this exercise. And it is ambiguous. Nahrun kabirun can mean a river is big. But it can also mean a big river. The ending un in both of these words, naharun, kabirun, the un ending indicates the, um, first of all, the nominative case, and also the, the, n the n of this ending indicates indefinite uh, state. Now, why do we have two of them? It, it sounds as if Arabic says a river is a eh, big, right? Why does kabirun, which means big, also have the um, the tanween, the noon of the indefinite article? Well, that is a, a matter of congruency. So to indicate uh, that these two words go together, and that kabirun is um, you know, uh, connected to Nahrun, you use the the phrase, uh, so, so to indicate that it's a phrase, you use the uh, this uh, type of nonation, and um, well, that's that's the way it, it goes uh, all through uh, Arabic. If you have um, also a word with a definite article, then the adjective will also get the definite article. As in, for instance, uh, if you have a phrase as in as in two, two is read al maliku al latifu. So we are in exercise four, and that's sentence two that I just read, al maliku latifu. And this means the king. Sorry, the the nice king, al maliku al latifu, the nice king. Note that both words have the definite article. El maliku el latifu. On the subject of definite articles, you can notice that the first definite article is not um, uh, uh, assimilated. I mean, the lamb of the first definite article is not assimilated because mim is a so called moon letter that is uh, sufficiently removed i mean it's uh, it's sufficiently different from the letter l that it is not uh, does not give rise to a, an, an ass assimilation of the l letter l maliku in the next case latifu there is an assimilation which is natural and an l that clashes with an l of course these two l's will simply make one long l latifu okay so that means the nice king and the presence of the definite article with the adjective al latifu the king the nice in arabic indicates that they're uh, that they're uh, read together that they are one phrase and that's uh, simply a matter of uh, of indicating congruency in arabic moving on to the next sentence or next um, yeah, sentence three in exercise four. We have al baytu nazifun. Al baytu 
Nazi fun. Okay? Now, here you have first a word with a definite article and then a word without the definite article. The second word has the indefinite article, nazi fun. The second word is an adjective meaning clean. Al baytu is a noun meaning the house. Baytun is a house. Al baytu is the house. Incidentally, you can't have uh, both uh, tanween, that is a, uh, a definite, a an indefinite article, and the definite article al at the same word. That's just not done. Just as in English, you can't have a the, you can't have the a man or a the man. So the they're mutually exclusive in uh, these two types of articles, both in Arabic and in in English, logically exclusive even. If a word is indefinite, it cannot also be definite, and and uh, vice versa. So, this sentence means the house is clean. Now, if you wanted to say the clean house, you would have to put the definite article after, sorry, uh, on the second word also. Al baytu an nazifun, sorry, an nazifu, al baytu an nazifu. We call that the attributive use of the definite article of the of the adjective as an attribute. The clean house. In that case, the adjective is an attribute. The clean house. The house is clean. In that case, the adjective is a predicate, a predicate, and we call that the predicative use of the uh, adjective. So. In this case, the house is clean. Now the predicate, nazifun, clean, the adjective there, has the nunation, the nazifun, which is a regular Arabic grammar in, in the case of a predicate. Exercise four, sorry, exercise four, sent sentence four, is um, parallel to sentence one in this exercise, in that both words are indefinite. Both words have the nunation bustanun hasanun. Both end in un. And in that case we again have uh, an ambiguity. This could mean a nice or a pretty garden or a garden is pretty. Usually when you see such a phrase it will mean a pretty garden. A garden is pretty, is um, statistically a, a, a rarer type of expression than an, a, a nice garden, a beautiful or a pretty garden. And, um, and so on. So, please continue doing this exercise using the word list for exercise three and four. Using the word list, you can translate the rest of the sentences in this exercise and figure out whether it's a, whether it's a full sentence, as in the house is clean in three. That's a full sentence. The house is clean. That's a full sentence. Or whether it's a f just a phrase, uh, as in two, the nice king, al maliku al latifu. So please... Um, translate these and also read them a couple of times. All of these exercises, please read them aloud for yourself or for your study group a couple of times. That's really important, again, to help your brain recognize this as a language. Um, it's helpful to, to be able to, to read with, well, not completely fluent, but with some degree of fluency. If you scroll down on um, exercise four, you are asked to translate into Arabic ten sentences or ten phrases. Um, and, well, you do that in the same way, using the word list. And then um, th when you've done it, use the key to check if you've done it correctly. Okay, that's it for... Uh, 
exercise six. And um, thank you.